This particular video is going to discuss the velocities of stars and not only the Doppler effect with velocity going away or uh, approaching but also the sideways motion that, uh, that stars have in their velocities. So this is just a reminder of Doppler effect. I've uh, recorded other videos with this. So if we have a car sounding a horn, that car moves off to our left. As the waves are continually emitted, the peaks get pressed closer together and we hear a high pitch if we're to the left of the car. If we're off to the right of the car, as the car moves to the left, the waves are, the wave peaks are further apart than if the car is stationary, and that causes a lower pitch, a lower frequency. And of course, the same thing happens to light as to sound. The wave effect is uh, very similar, and we get this blue shift and red shift. Blue shift if the star is coming towards the Earth. Red shift if the star is moving away from the Earth. So blue shift and red shift. The Doppler effect can give us the um, measurement of the speed of the star coming towards us or the speed of the star moving away from us. Now this shift is not large. This shift does not change the color of stars, at least for our galaxy. Um, when we get to the expansion of the universe, we'll talk about how the expansion of the universe causes a color change and that's different than Doppler effect. Uh, but we'll get to that. But for the Doppler effect, it's a, a small change, it's measurable, but it's not a great change. Uh, a star is not red or blue because it has a certain speed towards the Earth or away from the Earth, a star in our galaxy. Uh, so I'd like you to kind of take that, uh, this picture here with just a, a little bit of caution. The Doppler effect changes the wavelengths of the emission and the absorption lines, but only by a small amount. It doesn't, for the stars in our galaxy, the Doppler effect does not change the wavelength of uh, yellow into red or change the wavelength of yellow into blue. There's just a small shift. It's measurable. It gives us the speed of the star towards us or away from us. Now, in this particular case, which direction is the source moving? Which direction is the source moving? If up on the top is a spectrum measured in a lab on the Earth and the spectrum down below is a spectrum from some hypothetical star. Which way is the star moving? Well, if this is the uh, source that is in the laboratory at rest with respect to us, and this is the star's spectrum, we can see that the wavelength has been shifted towards the red, so the star is moving away from us. This Doppler effect gives us indication the star is moving away from us. The wavelengths of the lines went towards the red, stars moving away, redshift, moving away. Now, there's also a sideways motion for stars on the sky. This is called proper motion. Proper motion, the sideways motion of the star on our sky. So, during a year or a month or you know, 10 years or something, depends on the stars on how fast they move, uh, but we'll have a situation that the star is has a part of its velocity that's uh, uh, perpendicular to our line of sight, so moving sideways. It has part of its velocity that's uh, straight away from us or it could be straight towards us for a different star, but this is the Doppler shift measurement. We can measure this uh, transverse velocity just by taking a photograph and seeing how the star changes compared in its position compared to more distant stars. And we could combine these two and get a space velocity. We're, in my class we're not going to do that. Uh, but you should realize Doppler effect can give us this radial velocity and then by taking photographs uh, separated by many years usually uh, we can get an indication if the star is shifting sideways on the sky and that's called its proper motion, its change in its position against the more distant stars. So here is an example of a star that has a rapid prop, a high proper motion called Barnard Star and these photographs were taken over a nine year uh, stretch. You can see the other stars in the field here are not shifting their positions. Uh, they're more distant objects. Barnard star is relatively close to us and has uh, an orientation for its velocity of sideways and that gives it this uh, noticeable shift in position on the sky. So over a nine-year period you can see how it has moved. This is not due to motion of the Earth. This is not parallax. This is actual physical motion of the star through space sideways to how we're looking at it. Um, 
an example here of uh, Big Dipper. Started in the far BCs, then going into the ADs, and many, many years, uh, you know, 100,000 years BC. Um, I'll see if I can go back to that. The start was 100,000 BC, coming up to right now, and then going into the future, and the Big Dipper will be distorted again for 100,000 uh, AD. So that was about if I saw the numbers right, about 200,000 years of uh, motion there. But this change of the shapes of the star patterns, that's a proper motion effect. Proper motion can change the shape of the constellations. This is you know, only a very slight effect over a human lifetime, and you know, 200,000 years um, is what this animation shows. Uh, so you will not, if you get used to certain star patterns, you will not have to get used to different shapes of those star patterns in another 50 years. They will be uh, the same. But proper motion causes a change in the shape of uh, star patterns, but only very slowly. And let's say does a rough guide, about 50,000 years to get some uh, noticeable change to the constellations. And these are different for different constellations because there are different stars with different proper motions in the uh, different constellations. Proper motion, sideways motion, uh, Doppler shift cannot measure that. Uh, Doppler shift gives us the speed of the star towards us or away from us. The proper motion tells us information about the sideways motion of a, uh, a star on the sky. Um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed that and uh, you can I'm sure see some other of these on YouTube. Uh, but uh, Keep reading, ask some questions.